Good day everybody and welcome at E36 and E46 Vlog 84 a Harmon Cardon speakers on a non-Harmon Cardon sound system part 2 um, I just came from the BMW dealer and I have a big box with parts in it I'm going to show you later uh, what's in it um, So if you want to put uh, speakers into your rear shelf, so your rear speakers you have uh, four options um, number one is, I would uh, call it uh, normal, the normal speakers. Um, option number two are the original hi-fi speakers. Option number three are the Harman Cardon speakers. And yeah, uh, option number four is uh, aftermarket. So, the option for Harman Kardon speakers is already gone because you cannot buy them new um, at the BMW dealer anymore and they cannot order it. So maybe you are lucky and somewhere they have it on the shelf or else you have to buy them second hand and they're 10 to 20 years old and who wants those speakers because they're already old uh, through the type and also through material I don't want that. So <coughs> we have these three uh, uh, options. So the normal speaker, um, I don't want that because they're not good. Um, the high five version, I didn't know they had that. That is an option and of course the Harman Kardon because you can put um, the speaker roasters on it with a nice logo. It's not um, for sale anymore uh, new, so I cannot do that anymore. So I'm not going to put the caps on because the high five speakers are not Harman Kardon but they are uh, super shaded for the Harman Kardon. That means that uh, the parts is not available anymore and BMW subscribe the Hi-Fi speakers. And of course, you can um, order aftermarket speakers. So I'm going to talk about that later. First, I'm going to show you what's in the box. Well, on top, I'm going to show you the part number. Um, are the original. BMW Hi-Fi speaker. So this is the one uh, that we have. Um, like you can see in the previous vlog, I was busy with option number four, the aftermarket. But I don't like the caps um, folding up or give space. So I really want this BMW speakers. So I'm going to pack it out and show you up close. They're not great, but they're good enough. too big it says that there are two ohm and I'm going to explain you that later so what do we have more of course another speaker um, actually they are the same from left and right and rear and the front you're gonna need these double leaf Uh, stackers you can order them with a thin wire from one millimeter and this one is 2.5 millimeters that's the thickest one so i'm going to use this as a speaker wire original bmw with the stackers uh, on them i already had them but i uh, yeah, took some uh, took some material off so i bought new gray um, speaker grills I believe from the M3 and the non-M3 are exactly the same. I'm going to show you the part number. They supplied it with some foam for in between. Then you're gonna need this stacker. Uh, I took it off. I'm going to show you later how I'm going to uh, Frankenstein everything together. So this is the part number for the stacker. I cut my one off because I put aftermarket speakers in and I'm gonna need it, them now. So I need the new stackers combined with these pins and then click them in. I don't know if I have the pins here. No, I don't. I'm 
going to show you the part number um, in the corner and I've already got my original BMW logos for the rims that is actually for the previous vlog but I'm working on two vlogs simultaneous so um, I'm going to show you them and I already explained them in the previous vlog so if you want to see these uh, yeah, logos on uh, original BBS CH2 rims then check out the last vlog so um, what I'm going to explain now <coughs> the normal speakers they are 2 ohm so the hi-fi speakers are also 2 ohm and if you already have armor donor found them anyway they are I believe a 3 ohm and the aftermarket set that I have so it's actually a set that you have to put on uh, an amp flyer those are 4 ohm and like I said in the vlog armor speakers on a non armor sound system is that possible um, yes it is possible but what is the difference well um, if you have a 2 ohm speaker it means that if you put the volume up just a little bit then it produces sound if you have a 3 or a 4 ohm a speaker without the amplifier um, you have to put on the volume more to get sound out of it so the, the case in my E46 is that uh, in the front um, I have I think 3 or 4 ohm rainbow speakers and now I'm going to have 2 ohm uh, speakers at the rear so it means that if I put the filter in the middle and I put the volume up uh, the rear speakers produce more sound than the front and you can tackle that um, by putting your uh, filter into your head unit so your radio a little bit more to the uh, to the front so that the front 4 ohm speakers get more power than the 2 ohms and then it's simultaneous uh, sound so um, then one more thing like this one here it doesn't really matter but I just looked it up I don't know how much uh, what those speakers are they're not so crazy much these ones are but you really need amplifier for it so the normal uh, loudspeaker stereo system are 50 between 10,000 hatch the hi-fi version so the one that we have so this version this is bigger than the normal version they produce sound between 50 and 7000 Hatch and the Harmon Cordon Hoover they not show it here but anyway 50 to 7000 and how do I go into Frankenstein everything uh, back together let's put the red one um, so we have this hi-fi speaker and I already have a filter uh, from my rainbow aftermarket set and we're going to put the woofer on the woofer channel and the tweeter on the tweeter channel and that is going to the, uh, the Harman Kondon tweeter so that makes it <coughs> like OEM hi-fi speaker with a rainbow rainbow uh, filter and a Harman Kondon tweeter I bought the, the Harman Kondon tweeter because um, especially for that you have to screw it in or else it doesn't fit or you really have to customize and that doesn't look nice the OEM speaker I have to pick that one because I want my rear shelf to be flat and look really good um, and the rainbow uh, filter I already have it and it's a pretty expensive uh, compo set so it's a good filter so this is the Frankenstein combination that I'm going to make uh, it will produce sound but like I said 2 ohm and 4 ohm with the volume and stuff I really love um, the Dynamat so that's for anti-vibration and also for sound dampen 
and uh, I also like the sound nap. So if you have the time and money and you have a harmacardon or aftermarket set with an amplifier, what you can do is um, you can take your rear shelf off, um, get the damping material, the OEM one off, and put Dynamet over there. Then take your rear shelf and put um, sound nap on that, just the flat material, anti-verbation. And then you have like the pyramids, the pyramids uh, version, and you can put that on. And what that produces is like more sound um, into the uh, yeah, the area where the speakers come. If you don't have an amplifier, so in my case, you really don't need the Dynamat. Um, if you do the Dynamat, make some malls uh, out of carton and do it real nice, use a roller, and um, yeah, that should be fine. That's really something I like, and I did it at my uh, door panels the last time, and I'm probably going to do it at the front. But at the rear OEM, it's already really good um, isolation in it, and I don't have an amplifier, so it's not necessary for me to do it and I have a lot of work on the E46 and the E36 as well so I'm not going to do that but like I said if you have the time and money for it just do it it can't hurt and it really helps the sound but it is not necessary because OEM is really good um, already so you don't need it so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to the uh, garage going to put the speakers in I also have uh, new screws for it the clamps are already replaced and then I'm going to place the caps on it and then we're going to check the sound. So, um, I'll talk to you guys when we are at the garage later. So, we are at the garage and put the sunshade down. You can see the E36 there at the back. Like you can see here, Rainbow Subwoofer put a small uh, micro uh, amplifier on this one. And we're going to close that one. This is uh, loose for about four months and I'm really irritated about it. Let's take it off. Here's still here some wrinkle. I think it's this. Maybe it's my crick at the back or my diffuser, but we're going to check that later. So we're going to remove the speakers. They're hanging in there loose. Like you can see, they have uh, aftermarket clamps on them. Watch your tent windows, tint windows. Um, I left the headrests uh, loose because else you cannot reach the speaker caps so good and I cannot reach the filters. So now I'm going to take them off. Uh, make sure that if you use a thicker speaker wire that you make this space a little bit bigger. Uh, don't try to uh, push the pins over here, but what I do is I put a screwdriver in it and bend the whole plastic so the pins stay intact. So. Here are the aftermarket speakers. Um, there's enough foam in there to just clamp them under your shelf. So now I'm going to get the speakers and the wires and I have to put the pins into the new OEM uh, clamps, stackers. And um, I'm going to get them and then I'll come back to you guys. Okay, I checked it out and you can put them in uh, horizontal and you can put them in vertical and there are little clamps st sticking out so you have to do it good at once. So I send the picture to the BMW dealer and they lay in there horizontal so like this. I don't know if you could see it. 
check it out. And the clamp, so that's good. It um, doesn't really matter yet. Let's see if I do correctly. Um, which one you put left or right because you have to choose the minus and the plus yourself. Let's do the other one. Top and bottom is like equal. So it doesn't matter how you click them in. Okay, so they're in. And now we have to go attach them um, onto the um, speaker filters. Um, what you can do is use a scissor to strip it. Don't get off too much wire because you don't want to put a solder or other stackers in between. Um, I have a special tool for this, but I can't find it. I'm going to try to, uh, to find it into the garage and else I'm going to do it with this. Um, I'm pretty handy with it, so it probably be fine. The thing is I don't want to cut off um, yeah, unnecessary inside wire. So I'm going to uh, look for the uh, special tool inside to strip it, the strip tool and um, the strip tool. Or, uh, or else I'm going to use the scissor. So I'm going to check it out in the garage. So I can't uh, find the stripping peels. That's the name of the, um, the translation for the special tool. Um, I've got the speakers over here. And like you can see and know, probably know, is they have uh, one clamp over here and two at the side. So you have to check on which side the stacker goes. Um, I see it had only a stacker on the bottom. The top one is empty. So there are um, both at the 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 inside so you can cut off pretty much of the wiring I'm going to check if I'm going to put the filter in here or there I'm probably going to do it here and then I'm going to cut the wire and then we have to put some fork clamps on them this one's just universal stuff and the special tool and you should watch which addition you put on the bottom and the front do it nicely what I always do is um, I just grab a stacker and I'm going to try how it's going to look if you clamp it so I'm going to check out the wiring how long it should be so I checked it out and at the sides there's not enough a clearance and not enough space over there so I'm going to put them at the inside so I can make the wiring uh, pretty short I'm not going to do it too short let's say I cut it in half if you really are an audio feel then make sure uh, your speaker wiring is at the left and the right about the same length doesn't really matter if you don't do that but it is better okay the other one the same So I'm going to use the A settings, now I'm going to look how much wire to get off.
like I said, if you are like a rookie or beginner, um, buy a special tool for this to strip it. If you have a little bit feeling in your hands, you can do it with a scissor. And we didn't lose any material. thing with this is if I mess up one then I have to do everything over again take it off twist it not too much just a little bit and then the same length on the other side Just take your time for stuff like this. Don't twist too hard because then you will twist the wire off. It still works if you do that, but it's better to keep the full material. BMW supplies the wires with good copper, so you can use a thinner wire. But like I said, I always check the real OEM side going to put the website here uh, at the side and I check um, if there are better options and then go to the BMW dealer and tell them what to order instead of asking them what I need so the thing is with these little forks if you clamp them, um, do them straight. So if you put them like this, don't put them like that on the right side because then you have to twist the cable. So I'm going to use a bit thicker hole because the red ones are really too tight and then the wire is going to split. Make sure they stick out just a tiny little bit. Put them on the blue one, so the middle. And like I said, keep them straight, same as the other side. I always put, no, we need the red one, the wire is too thin. Okay, it's on. Always make sure you have more than enough uh, stickers. Maybe you're going to fill one and you need a new one. And there's nothing more irritating when you don't have it. So, forks at one side, original OEM BMW stacker at the other side. This will happen. Can't really see it. When you use two small stackers, and you don't want to miss any of these wires so there we go again one
So this is like pretty straightforward. Uh, your input, so where originally was the stacker, uh, goes here. Um, it filters to your tweeter. Here you only have to watch for the plus and the minus. This one goes all the way there to the Harmon Cardon tweeter. And to the woofer, you're gonna need um, the left one is the minus if you have your stacker like upside down. So this is important if you have your stacker like this, so not like that, like this. The left one is brown and brown is the minus. This is very important. If you put this um, like upside down wrong, then the conus is not going up, but it pushes down. So you can check it when it's in and it's playing music. So like I said, it's pretty important. If you hold it like this, the left one is brown and that is the minus and the yellow one is the plus. So the thing where I run into now is that the cabling can only come from this side. Um, if you made your cable too short, you will have to cut a hole on the other side. But we're going to check if it fits. So that was where I was afraid of. We made the wiring too short. So I have to go check for a solution maybe if I can put the filters at the other side. So I'm going to check that now. So let that be a lesson. Don't cut them off too short because you have to rotate them to the other side. And now they are too short. So I had to get back to the garage because the other soldering gun didn't get warm enough and the soldering didn't um, get liquid. Uh, another tip, when you put these wires together, make sure you put a good isolation between this because when those two wires hit each other, it will blow up the trap from your uh, amplifier or when you don't use it from your head unit. So make sure to isolate it good, it's an isolation tape. Or with some rubber. So I extend the wires with um, aftermarket good speaker cable. Uh, I taped it up. Look, uh, looks pretty uh, OEM. Happy with it. Um, actually, it's better because it's flexible and it's a good thick speaker wire. Um, the other thing is I like the pins uh, on a wire because uh, else they can get loose and when they're on a the wire OEM from the fabric uh, they fit better. I also did that with the steering wheel from Mule One flippers. So um, I don't want to do this like perfect, it's more like functional but do it in good quality. The E36 on the other hand uh, I want to do as perfect as possible. Um, so the wires are done, um, we have to hurry up because it's getting dark and the stupid evening clock is uh, kicking in. So um, we go to the car, um, mount the cables and then try the speakers in. And uh, let's see the result guys. So make sure that you tuck in the wires nicely before you put these caps in. Make sure that you plug it in on the inside because the outside doesn't have pins. Once again it's really tight so make sure you have enough length on the wiring. I hope it will fit. It will fit only one way in.
make sure to push in the purple yeah, stacker to lock it. Okay, it's in. Perfect. Oh, yeah, so before fit. to put the bolts on the foam and then the speaker grill, always check your speakers first. Uh, the speakers has to go up. If they go down, then you got the minus and the plus twisted around and you have to swap that before mounting it. So I'm going to try it now and let's see if the speaker is working correctly. So I don't want speaker grills uh, to go up and uh, get a gap. So I ordered the uh, original bolts. So the part number. And you can mount them with an 8. So let's uh, attach those speakers. Like I said, if you have your uh, headrest on, it's really hard to work on. It's better like this. And always make sure you align the holes uh, the correct way. So what you can do, and you definitely don't have to do it, but I have it laying around here for the screws that I have to mount for these uh, locks. I have Loctite, because of the vibration uh, the bolts can get loose, doesn't matter, you can just put them on again. But I'm going to put the Loctite in, so I'm going to get one out, put the Loctite in, then get another one out and get the Loctite on. You don't have to use much. Other bolts are already mounted, so they're in the right position. guys it's uh, Queen's Day today so uh, that explains the orange cap um, uh, I got the rear wheels off because I got the new uh, logos from BBS so I exchanged them and they're on uh, it looks pretty awesome I'm happy with it I'm going to show you guys but when I got the wheels off it was really rusty and crusty over there so never drive without uh, your wheel caps um, I'm going to make a vlog how to tighten up your wheels uh, the correct way and um, also what kind of materials of disc brakes there are. Uh, some are rusty and some are getting less rusty. And um, in my case it was very rusty, so rusty that uh, my rear wheels are started shaking on the highway. So I cleaned them up and I also cleaned out the inside of the wheels of the original PBSs. I'm going to make a vlog about it, but uh, yeah, it's a nice thing to do if you don't have so much money and a lot of time. Um, so maybe in the Corona you want to do that. So um, what I used is, um, first of all, I uh, grinded up uh, the rust. I did it with a 180. You can better do it with 240 because you're really getting material off, but it was so rusty that I needed to do it, especially at the left rear. Um, afterwards, I cleaned the whole rim with a rim cleaner uh, by hand and uh, wiped it up with water. 
and the rough spots I used a uh, brake cleaner and be very careful with that because it's super aggressive and you don't want to um, yeah, hurt the paint. Um, what I also did is I got the sticker material off because there are uh, whites on it to stabilize the wheels and uh, now I understand why the mechanics uh, don't get uh, the rest leftovers of the sticker because it's really irritating so I use sticker removal and uh, some st other stuff to get it off and it is off so it was uh, almost a day work to get all the rust off and also all uh, the sticker material so they're on um, too bad I cannot let you hear the sound of the speaker probably I'm going to um, exchange the wire again use soft tape and do it um, from the inside now it's all the way around and it's pretty tight and also I think I know where uh, the rattle was coming from I think it's the headrest so maybe I'm going to put some silicone hose in there or else it must be your crick, your diffuser or your exhaust hitting your diff or uh, a hit shield. I don't know, I'm going to watch and um, going to check it out later and also make a new vlog about how to proper mount your wheels. So um, I cannot uh, let you hear the sound of the speakers because my head unit is broken I can only listen to the radio and the Bluetooth doesn't work. So um, you have to trust me for this. Um, the material how it looks I give it maybe a 7 it doesn't look so good it's really like stock the sound that it produces because it's not a standard it's the high five version um, I give it a 9 if you listen to it slow uh, on a uh, low volume and an eight and a half when it's on high volume it get twisted a little bit but there's no amplifier between it so let's say I'm going to give them a 8.5 but they're really better than I thought and it's also nice that you, when you put on the volume you only um, hear it more from the rear and when you have a nice song and you want to hear it louder then you put on the volume and you hear it more from the front so the 2 ohm and 4 ohm difference is actually quite, um, quite nice so um, I'm going to show you the sound uh, or let you listen to the sound later for, for now you have to trust me it's really a 8.5 maybe a 9 it's better than I thought. I don't know how long it will last, but I'm happy with it. And the guy who got my high-end speakers, all custom, three and a half work, you're welcome guy. Um, he's very happy with it and they work pretty good. So that's an option that you can choose or you can customize it. Or you can put the Hi-Fi speaker on it or the Harman Kardon speaker when you can still find it. But don't use the standard version and I already explained you why. So um, when you like the video, please a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe on the channel for more updates for this E46 and also for the E36. Later guys!